Hey guys, uh, my name is Clint. Um, I've had a few comments on Instagram and uh, emails of people wanting to know a little bit how I do uh, graphics. And I used to only do um, default materials for Rhino, but um, V-Ray for Rhino. Um, but I've gotten into uh, um, V-Ray materials now and it looks a lot more realistic in the renderings if that's what you're um, going for. So I'll try to introduce how to do that if you don't already. Um, not an expert by any means, so um, yeah. Um, I'm going to show you how to apply a texture map to this wall here. Um, and hopefully I'll probably put a picture up of the final rendering so you get the idea, um, like right now. So hopefully you're seeing that. Um, So in Rhino, um, back in Rhino, this is a project that I worked on for about three weeks. Um, and it was just testing out those materials. So um, I'll kind of show you how to, on this wall, how to apply the same map as this wall, uh, which is just like a tiled concrete thing. Um, so first we'll go into um, Go Online, which is where I get um, all my materials on flyingarchitecture.com. Um, right here, Flying Architecture, and uh, I think you have to create an account first, um, but once you do that, you can get so many materials, I think, per day. I'm not really sure what their, um, um, their limit is. Um, so here is the, um, the concrete. You just go over here to the Materials tab, and then click on Concrete, and then um, all these pop up. So this is already downloaded in my... Um, my documents um, in my library of um, materials, but I'll download another material um, just so you know how to do that. So click on the material, click download here, um, and it'll ask you to save the file. And then once it downloads, just open that up and extract those to a folder um, that you designate as your materials. Um, for your material folder. So materials, concrete, and that can just be in like your documents or anything like that. So um, extracted those. Um, okay, and apparently I already have that material, so I'll just say skip those. Um, but um, it should be all loaded up. So this is that, that documents folder you extract it to, and then it has all these weird um, maps and things and uh, just images for that material. So closer to that, um, go into Rhino, and then you can um, click on the wall first, or you can choose to um, put that on a new layer. Um, I usually just choose to put it directly on that, um, the selected, because then you can go in and change it if you need to um, directly. Um, so go up here, um, top left, or wherever you have it. Um, my icons are kind of tiny, sorry. Um, but it's in v if you have V-Ray installed, it is the M with the yellow circle. And then none of these will be shown. Um, these are all the materials that I've loaded in for this project. But um, just the scene materials right here will be, um, be there. So you right click on that, um, load material. And then you can um, browse that materials folder that you put in your documents. So go to the concrete that we had. Um, and I'll just choose the tiled one since that's what we're, I'm going to try to match. So um, then it instantly loads it into this um, list here. Um, and it usually shows you a little preview. It's kind of glitchy right now. Let's see. Okay, so I found the tiled, and then it has all these options that um, um, they set up for whenever they made this material. So sometimes the bump map will be kind of large, so you can turn that down if you need to. Um, but usually they're all 1.0, um, so that's so that's good. Um, so I'll just say apply material to selection. Right click on the concrete tiled, apply material to selection, and then it'll um, load that in. I already think this wall had been previously mapped, so it was um, already good to go. But 
Let's see. Maybe I'll just make a box. So it's nice and fresh, like yours probably will be as well. Um, so if I want to apply the material to the selected, go back to that M, right click, apply material to selection. So you see the map is kind of stretched out. Um, and then maybe it's not even oriented the way that you want. So over in this right hand panel, um, in pro under properties, uh, which is right up, right next to your layers, um, go to um, the texture mapping icon and then apply box mapping. Um, you're going to do that for everything that's like 3D. Um, not just because this is a box, but <laughs> because it's 3D. So just press enter three times because it's going to ask you um, all these things. I think usually I do bounding box world yes but you can just do whatever you want and then change it later um, so you see that it kind of made it a little more regular um, and then you can change that the scale of that material over here on the right again um, so the XYZ size is the the scale of the material and the XYZ rotation is um, just how that map is oriented on the surface and then the position is how um, again where it is on the surface so if you change that to like a hundred it'll probably move yeah it'll shift a little um, so XYZ size I usually it's like 10 I think is the regular size or, or like somewhere um, lowish number but um, this looks kind of small for the um, the panel size so I would say like that's huge let's go 40 Try to keep them all constant. So that looks decent. And then you can uh, change the position um, just manually. It might take a little bit. And then you can rotate them um, like that if you rotate it 90 degrees. So, um, yeah, it's just a way to do that. So um, that's how you apply a map and scale it. So once you have all those materials mapped that you want, um, now I'll show you how to set up the um, settings for V-Ray um, that I typically do. So um, go into the options, which is this uh, little yellow tag in the um, left-hand corner with the O on it. Um, and then the tabs that you'll need to remember is camera, environment, and output. Um, so if you're doing a realistic rendering um, and you have lights, um, you turn the camera on but if it's um, more of a diagrammatic I guess rendering um, you can you can turn that off if you don't have any lights um, but if you're using like a pretty bright um, sunlight um, I would turn the physical camera on um, and then environment I would make the background white um, this usually would be black I think whenever you um, just open it for the first time and then output is, uh, you probably already know this, but um, what the image is being exported as. Um, so 640 by 480 is the default, but usually for um, like an Instagram picture, it'll be like 2000 by 2000. Or um, if it's like a final rendering that'll go on my presentation boards, I'll put it at like 10,000 by like 15,000 or something like that. Um, so... Um, I'll show you how to set up a light. My friend Eric showed me directional light right here um, is a little bit better than sun because um, sun gives it kind of a yellower um, tint. Um, so if you don't want that, um, then directional light would be better. Um, so you just click anywhere and then you can drag it based on like what time of day, um, like where you are. So um, Click once to set the, the rotation spot and then another time to set where that is. Um, so now you can't see where, what you just placed because you're in rendered view. Um, unless you're not in rendered view, you can see it. So um, shaded or wireframe, you can see that, um, that directional light. Um, so when you select that, you can change the, um, the altitude of where that light is coming from. Um, so just rotate that um, 
to, I don't know, however high, maybe 45 degrees. Um, so once that is in there, you're going to want to go over to Properties under the Light icon. Um, make sure it's enabled. Um, if you uncheck that, um, it won't render with the light on, but enable it. And then turn the intensity up to like 20 or 25-ish. Um, so let's just go 23. Um, and then make sure your physical camera is turned on, which was um, that first thing that we did in the V-Ray options. Um, so it is checked. And then you can render it. Just um, click the blue circle, render. Um, I've already done mine. And, oh, no, I didn't. Oh, that was in previous. Had to exit out of Rhino because it crashed. So it's saved already. But if you hit render, it will do it from that spot. It'll take a little bit longer since you're using lights. And since you're using materials, it'll take a little bit longer to get those textures ready. Um, so you'll see that your background isn't white like you changed the environment to. That's because you're using a light in physical camera. Um, so I'm going to show you how to change your background in Photoshop. Um, my friend Tyler showed me how to um, easily crop out the sky instead of um, going through Photoshop with the, um, the marquee tool or the lasso tool or whatever. Um, so saving the image for all channels right here, um, all the all three floppy disks instead of uh, just the single one you would hit. Um, it will save the image as this picture here and then it will save it as this here. Um, so you would open them both up in Photoshop, you would open this one first and then place this one on top of it. And then once you do that, um, I'll show you, but you can select this black and then select all the black and just delete it. Um, and then you can place anything in behind it, whether you want it just to be white or um, put clouds in there or something. So I'll show you how to how I usually put clouds in mine if you're wanting it to look realistic. So um, let's go ahead and go into Photoshop since that's already been saved on mine. Um, open. It's on my desktop. So open that image and then place, file place, um, the alpha channel is what it's called, on top of that and we'll just do it directly on top. So, um, okay. And then you're gonna um, take the, I think it's called the marquee, rectangular marquee tool or something like that and then drag in the black and then at the top you're gonna go to select on the drop down menu I don't think you can see it I think the, the mouse is kinda off the screen um, select similar and then it'll select all the black and then you um, get rid of that mask that you had on the um, that first picture over here on your layers and then just delete and then whenever you hide this picture, you can see that um, what you were deleting was the background of this. So, um, yeah, so it'll give you this um, this image with only, yeah, you can see the, only the picture of what you want. So then you can go ahead and place um, clouds if you want or whatever else in the background. I think I have some clouds on here somewhere. Um, yeah. So, just place those and um, go ahead and just drag that layer behind the last image so you can see that it did that. And just size those however you want. And then, usually, I like um, my style is pretty desaturated colors, um, not really bright. Um, bright colors like blue or anything so I would usually try to take the vibrance down so adjustments over here um, that black and white circle 
Um, if you don't see that, I think it should be under your window at the top window and then adjustments. And then this will pop up. So you can go into the vibrance and turn that down a little bit. Okay, and then maybe turn up the contrast and the brightness. So, and this is a really small rendering, so it won't be that great of quality, but uh, just so you get the idea. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then you can put another filter over your actual picture if you want as well. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Sometimes I do um, make 2Ds over the top of my renderings um, if it's more of a di diagrammatic drawing. Um, I have another tutorial for that on my website, though, under graphics, I think, is the icon. I think it's a pencil or something like that. Um, and the website is clintloganjohnson.com. Or if you have any other questions, just leave a comment um, or uh, feel free to email me. Um, email's on my website, too, so... Um, thanks a lot. Appreciate it.